are bringing together people from across our PHN um, with expertise in so many different fields um, to build a computer model of our healthcare system. We have the great pleasure of coming here to a beautiful region uh, in order to try and help with uh, the PHN's mission uh, and trying to engage with and, and help improve uh, mental health for the purpose of avoiding a, a human and societal tragedy which is suicide. This computer model will help us with our commissioning um, for the PHN. It will help us to have evidence informed services that we commission onto the ground. Um, and the exciting thing about this is the priorities that we get out of dynamic simulation will have come from um, a co-design process with our communities. You don't want to be driving while looking in the rear view mirror, but that's what existing policy tools are. They use historical data and assume the future is the same as the past and that's simply not the case. So dynamic simulation model brings together computational ability uh, and also technical skills and through that human process maps out what that future looks like and allows decision makers to engage just as you would with driving a car to make the right turns at the right time and press on the accelerator to make sure you get to across that journey as quickly as possible. Expectations coming here today were really to understand from a community perspective. Um, it's, it's, uh, I'm expecting that we'll be hearing from lots of different voices in the community about how we can make a real difference in the future. Suicide is a multi-dimensional, multi-sectoral uh, problem. It's something that we all share. We all have a part to play in its causation, but also its, its solution. And so I came to lend a hand. Now I understand the challenges and uh, I thought today might be a wonderful opportunity for us all to talk together. We really want to make sure that the modelling captures the community involvement. So we know what we need to do within the hospital and we know that the model is going to help us with that. But what we really want to see is how we can engage the community and how the model can capture that community involvement to reduce suicide. What's been happening in between workshop one and workshop two, we've been out to the community finding out what their priorities are for interventions for suicide prevention. We sent out a survey that was developed by this group here from workshop one and it went out and we had over a hundred responses. We also had lots and lots of feedback on the map that we created within workshop one and now we're putting the final touches on that now um, in workshop two, ready for the model to be run. The first workshop was about clarifying the current situation in terms of the roadmap in front of them. Workshop two is about then trying to clarify the interventions which can change the journey that we've been going on historically. So it's about introducing new interventions to try and then give the population more options, more service options um, and more and, and better quality service options. And the first time I was like, oh, this is like a suicide prevention experiment, like sort of virtual experiment. So you can actually see if we put in um, this intervention and we're able to do it at, you know, get this effect, then what happens if we put in this other one and this other one and, and what's going to have the biggest impact in what time frame? So that's been really exciting. For a lot of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities, it seems to be a little bit of um, uh, there's a gap and we're trying to link in a more holistic approach with, with services for more about uh, healing and with the clinical aspect of what's, what's been delivered. It's great to hear from Aboriginal people and communities of what they feel they need. So we're here at workshop three and we have just showed the participants the model for the first time. There's been a lot of excitement around this and people are sitting here engaging with the model, seeing what works, what doesn't work. We really value this process um, because we, uh, we learn a lot through it and we find out information that, is, that can't be found in any academic papers um, and it really helps make the models more robust. Um, and contextually relevant and fit for purpose. Since the last workshop, we've been working really hard to really clarify what each of the interventions are, making sure the feedback from both the workshops and the participants from around our region is really embedded in what we are going to be putting through the model. So just to recap, the policy model is like a sat nav for the PHN. It's, it's, a, it's trying to map out ahead policy options uh, and where we go by taking one option and not the other. Um, and what's been fantastic for me as an economist is going going through that process and learning also. Now we're at the stage where we can start to pour some petrol into the tank. Now what I mean by petrol into the tank um, is that how, how, how much resources do we need 
um, to invest in programmes to reach the destination that the PHN and collaborators want to, to get to. Um, and, and if investment is insufficient, if we don't put enough ga gas in the tank, what might the unintended consequences of that be? And each project is a little bit different, the stakeholders are different, aspects or characteristics of the system are different, so it's really important that each model um, is really grounded in local context. Just looking at some of the more holistic approaches that, that gets missed from mainstream services, especially directed at mainstream services, but also directed at Aboriginal people as well. Um, and so the, the modelling, this is our third, the third workshop and, and it's, it's really nice to see the actual trial of some of the models and, and really shows exactly that, that, the holistic, more health promotion, the more preventative um, treatments actually have a bigger impact on suicide outcomes. And, and it's important, I think, for, for funding bodies and, and people to see that. These things at times can be a little bit abstract until we start interacting again with the user. So it's really bringing together the, a technical process, but being reminded that it's very much a human process. That's what this is all about. It's about sharing experiences and, you know, if somebody's got a part of the jigsaw puzzle, why not, um, you know, not try to create your own. Let's use what's working and, um, and put it around other valuable pieces so we can get the final picture.